So conclusions in all of this. Um, my point, uh, which I think I should have made clear now, is that specificity is used in a much too broad sense and that we need to become better at distinguishing what we actually understand by specificity and at least communicate it clearly when we say specificity, what we mean. It's okay for me if you call something else specificity. I would like personally to stick with the hyper-excitable stretch reflexes since that is what it has been traditionally said for maybe 150 years now. So I don't really see any reason why we shouldn't stick with that term and use it for reflex excitability. Um, so passive and active uh, changes in muscle tone. Jakob is going to talk a lot more about that, but they do require different treatment and we need to be able to make a clear distinction between them. How can we do that in the best possible way? Uh, I think we need these objective assessment tools. We need to develop something that we can use clinically, routinely, in order to distinguish uh, these uh, different things. I also think very clearly that spasticity the hyper-excitable stretch reflexes, is for the most part a problem for subjects who are at rest. And certainly there are examples where patients don't need functional activity and where the spasticity is so dominant that it makes sense to dampen the spasticity with some kind of medication. But if you have patients who need some kind of functionality, you need to be aware that you're actually interfering with that functional ability in a negative way when you're giving the uh, antispastic treatment. So my main point here is that antispastic treatment should be directed at modulating the stretch reflex activity in the appropriate phases of movement where we can where we want to diminish the stretch reflex activity where it is doing harm rather than where it is doing good, because that depends on what the subject is doing. So, thank you very much. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that if, if you're interested in reading a little bit more on this, uh, there are a couple of books uh, that you can find on yanifu1.dk. Uh, it is a non-profit, uh, what is it called, formidling uh, organization. So the books are very cheap. It's, I think it's like 90 Danish kroner. Uh, if you're also interested in more of what I've said, we, we have a blog where we're discussing some of the findings that we have in the lab, and we also have our homepage where you can go in. <laughs>